back from New York. I love New York. And um, I was walking down the street. And normally, you know, one of my favorite things about New York is that, you know, you get so much people interaction. But everyone was looking down. They were texting. They were checking their email. Everyone. So, like, I half expected to see the Statue of Liberty with, like, torch in one hand and texting with the other hand. That was, like, my whole experience of New York. So what does it mean to be constantly connected? I think that the first time we're connected, um, I have two daughters, <laughs> um, is in the womb. And, you know, when you see those shots of the umbilical cord and you see all that information flowing, I think that's the first time where we're, like, hardwired to be connected. And then that cord gets cut. And we spend the rest of our lives trying to connect to something larger than ourselves, whether that's through your family or through your community or religion or culture. So we're all kind of trying to connect to the bigger picture. Today, we have so many more connective tissues to connect us, whether it's email or cell phones or Facebook or Twitter. And it's so seductive and so alluring. And it keeps us so busy. And we have little time to kind of stop and think, where is all of this technology taking us? And, you know, I'm as guilty as the next person. I'm addicted to the speed of it. I love buying the newest technology before anyone else. I'm constantly checking my email. And um, so I, while I'm going to kind of talk to you about my concerns about technology, I just want you to know a little bit of where I come from. So growing up in Marin, I'm from Mill Valley. I was a total computer geek. I had an Apple IIe. And um, I got the first Mac in the 80s before the web. And uh, I was so excited by the Mac and the modem. And I wrote this program, co-wrote this program in high school called Uniting Nations in Telecommunications and Software. Because I thought computers connecting people are going to change the world. And then later, I, um, I founded the Webby Awards. And so I spent 10 years of my life focused on what the internet means and how it's changing the way we live. And now I make movies that focus really on what does it mean to be connected. Next. So, as much as I love technology, I'm finding that I'm really wrestling in every day, every moment, you know, whether it's at breakfast with our kids, like, Tiffany, I'm not going to be on email, and kind of talking to myself, locking, you know, turning the computer off, trying to have kind of technology Shabbats, whatever I can do, because it's completely <laughs> consumed my life, and it's getting harder and harder for me to focus. Next. And I work in such a different way now. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm so distracted and I'm so ready for the next email. Like, even when I'm focusing and I'm working, I'm like, I'm wanting to be distracted. It's like I'm wanting someone to tap on me and bug me to get away from what I'm doing. And, you know, I try, I try to instate these rituals. Next slide. And a lot of people are talking about, this is not, you know, it's all over the place. Um, Thomas Friedman had this great column a couple years ago, and he said, we're living in the age of distraction. And then Jaron Lanier um, wrote this book that just came out uh, called You Are Not a Gadget. And Nicholas Carr um, has a new book coming out called The Shallows, where he feels like the internet is forcing us to skim important information and we no longer do a deep dive into what's important. Now, back in the 1950s, um, Hitchcock, you know, I'm a filmmaker, he used to say, a film should only be as long as your bladder can hold, <laughs> which is an hour and a half. And the TED Talks, you know, they're only supposed to be 18 minutes. And today on Twitter, we're only supposed to speak in 140 characters. So where is all this leading us? And I don't even know if that sentence is too long, which is basically the direction that we're all headed. So people say it's rewiring our minds. The internet's rewiring our minds. It's definitely rewiring our minds. So back. <laughs> so the question is, does the good outweigh the bad?